In 2011, Ryan Murphy changed the game and freaked out TV audiences in a big way by launching FX Network's American Horror Story. Since then, the horror anthology series has become appointment TV each fall, with seasons tackling demons, witches, aliens, vampires, political cults, serial killers, and anything else that might terrify and disturb. Along the way, the series has featured an impressive rotating cast of bona fide stars and notable character actors, many of whom have portrayed multiple iconic characters. Now, for our 2024 Halloween special, the great pop culture debate wants to determine the best American horror story character of all time. Just like Sister Mary Eunice, I've got the demons running all through me. I'm your host, Eric Resniak. Please help me welcome my panelists to this asylum. First up, it's the return of Carissa Kloss, who is destined to be killed off early this episode. Any final words, Carissa? Only one. Balenciaga! Well done. Now that's what I call a fire sale, people. Next, just like this series, his life is an anthology. It's Zach Derby. It's true. I never know what to expect day to day, week to week, season to season. I just hope I never wake up with lobster claws. Well, now I'm hungry for Cheddar Bay Biscuits. <laughs> and finally, we have an extra special guest panelist for this episode. Please welcome Erin Marlowe, host of It's a Fandom Thing, who is willing to let the Countess kill her just so she can live out eternity watching Liz and Tristan's love story. Hello, Erin. Hello, Eric. That does sound like heaven or hell. Whichever one you prefer, yeah. Uh, in addition to being tapped into any number of fandoms, Erin is in particular a huge horror fan, so we're so delighted to have her with us for this episode. Thank you so much, Erin. Up in the producer booth, we have Bob Erlenbeck, who is creeping on the men's shower at Camp Redwood to sneak a peek at Gus Kentworthy. If you're curious about how we ended up with this Scary 16, become a Patreon supporter of the podcast or listen to the three-minute primer available wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget, you can head to this episode on greatpopculturedebate.com to find the listener bracket, as well as clips from all 16 characters we'll be discussing, so you can play along with us at home. With that out of the way, let's go back to some of our favorite haunts as we try not to butcher these debates. And that's the only reference to Roanoke you're going to get this whole episode, folks. First up, it's a unanimous victory for ultimate number one seed Liz Taylor from Hotel, which meant that four seed Sister Mary Eunice from Asylum was exercised from the bracket. Devil! But I do want to speak briefly on Sister Mary Eunice and why I had so much fun with this nun. Asylum is a super ambitious season, absolutely crammed with interesting characters and subplots, some of which did not have enough room to breathe. Kit and the aliens, Shelly the nymphomaniac, need I say more? But Sister Mary Eunice... She shined. Lily Rabe absolutely devours this role, taking the meek novice nun and having her fully corrupted by a demon, turning into a sadistic, horny, vindictive, and conniving mastermind. It's like I see myself on the screen and I'm just in love with it. It's rare that this show is able to give us villains who are both genuinely scary and entertaining, and Sister Mary Eunice is one of the best of them. That being said, she's out of our bracket and Liz Taylor will continue into round two. Next, the majority of the panel wants to weather the cold with three seed Lana Winters from Asylum, but Carissa prefers the intense lesbian energy of two-seed Montana Duke from 1984. Zach, investigate why booting Lana from the bracket this early would be a crime. Carissa, tell us why Montana is your preferred squaring queen. Carissa, please go first. Yeah, Montana Duke, played by Billy Lord. 1984 is a pretty fun season, I think, and Montana Duke is kind of the main part of it for me. She is a character who outsources her dirty work. She tries to kill her friend, Brooke, as revenge, but then she's killed by Brooke, resurrected as a ghost, and murders a police officer. Iconic behavior. <laughs> she's <laughs> trapped in purgatory on campgrounds and spends the rest of her life just like messing stuff up there. But the thing about her that I love the most is that she is bleached blonde, aerobics obsessed, and the peak 80s hair and fashion. So she has to be on here um, as representative for this season, although I completely understand why she's going out. Yeah, I mean, that beginning montage where they're in the aerobics class is so good. I could have, I was just like, oh, this is going to be a hoot. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, before Zach gives this argument, I want to check did she sway you at all, Aaron? Or are you sticking with Lana Winters? It's hard because I love both so much uh, for very different reasons. But I think Lana Winters is like, for me, like the the top, top tier for, for Sarah Paulson. And that's that's hard to say. So no, but uh, but I do love her. I do love her. So yeah. Yeah. And I'm fun. glad 
I'm glad we talked about Billy Lord because I don't think she's anywhere else on this bracket, but Billy it was a great addition to this ensemble. Yeah. Zach, uh, has Chris swayed you or are you sticking with Lana Winters here? Uh, I am sticking with Lana Winters, and this was a difficult one because I, since Billy Lord showed up, she has been my favorite addition. I think there are some incredible actors and actresses, but as soon as she showed up, and I found out she was Carrie Fisher's daughter and I yeah. went, holy shit, this is amazing. And I love every one of her characters. I love 84 for the campiness and everything. It's an incredibly fun, silly, goofy season. But no, I'm going to stay with Lana Winter. She she does. Asylum is a flawed season, but she is one of the highest points of that season. And that, I think, continues into other seasons just as an individual character. She stuck out. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I'm going to have you hold on to your argument on Lynn, Lana for a future round, Zach. And we're going to move on to uh, round two, and Lana will continue that. Next, in a Coven Smackdown, one seed Misty Day twirled her way into round two via unanimous victory, while four seed Cordelia Good was supremely defeated. But Carissa, you wanted to say a few magic words in Cordelia's honor. I did. Um, I think we're going to be talking a bit about Sarah Paulson, and I... And so it makes sense that she's going out as this character. But I really, really like her in Coven, especially. Um, and in Apocalypse, when she plays the same character, uh, we learn another side. We get to see how kind of crafty she is. Um, but she's also protective and powerful. And she's a descendant of the Salem witches. And has an iconic line to her mom when she says, when are you going to die and stop ruining my life? I mean, how many times have we all <laughs> had our moments? <laughs> so, yeah, I I get why she's going out. but And I think uh, it's probably not the best of the Sarah Paulson characters, but I really liked her. She's kind of like a, um, I don't know, a calm presence in the chaos of this universe. Yeah, great points. Uh, that being said, Misty Day will continue into round two. Next, it's time to return to Murder House, where two-seed Constance Langdon currently has the edge over her son, three-seed Tate Langdon. Aaron, tell us why Constance is one badass mother we do want to mess with. Carissa, tell us why Tate and the Rubber Man still haunt your dreams. Carissa, please go first. Yeah, this one's a little weird for me. Tate is Evan Peters, and he is the villain of the first season. Um, but we don't know that right away. He's the neighbor. He's in a teen romance with the, with Violet. Um, then we find out more stuff about him, like that he's an ex-school shooter. He is dead and doesn't know he is. That he likes to show up in a gimp suit and impregnates Violet's mom. Uh, it gets a little off the rails. Um, and I remember watching the season when it was on way back when and not knowing where it was going to go, just that there was a lot of buzz about it. Um, and when the gimp suit first showed up, I was freaked out. I was like, what, what is this? So I think him in this role is a little bit iconic because he is the first monster of the whole series. Ryan Murphy called him the true monster um, because he is a sympathetic monster. And I think also it's just like he's a prototype and kind of the first um, sign of how weird this series is maybe going to get. And he's played really well. So he has played very well. Uh, Aaron, I do want to have you give your defense of Constance here because I, I know it's a three to one, but I, I think it's important we talk about these two together. Well, I mean, Constance, Jessica Lang, Jessica Lang's like first appearance in the Ryan Murphy universe. And I mean, just I'm not going to do justice to the way that Jessica Lang says this line, but just the I'm the fucking owner of this house. Just the way she says that, the way she commands every room, the way she does not care what you think about her. She is going to be who she is no matter what you say. In, there's something about, and I know it, smoking is bad, blah, blah, blah. But there's something about the way she smokes, the way she drinks, the way she talks to people that is both scary and sexy at the same time. And no one else could do that but Jessica Lange. And I just think she just commands that season. I think that season, and I love Murder House, but that season would kind of fall apart if she wasn't there. I think she's kind of the glue in a way that holds that season together. Yeah, I think that's very true. Zach, where are you on this one? I'm staying with Constance. Um, Tate, he was evil and he was an iconic monster. Constance is pure evil though. Like, 
the way that she's involved with everything, she manipulates the situation. She ta- she Tate is flawed, and that's one of the reasons why he is the way that he is. But Constance is calculating. She she is truly a scary individual that could exist in this real world. Uh, so I'm staying with her. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, she's kind of giving you Rosemary's Baby, uh, even though we got a full Rosemary's Baby season later on. Um, But no, I agree. This is a great matchup. It's kind of a bummer that they're both up against one another. I am going to give the edge to Constance here. I will say one last thing, though. It was very smart of Ryan Murphy, uh, because one of the things that this show does is it finds what terrifies people. America at the point in each of the seasons is set. What's more terrifying in the 2000s into early 2010s as school shootings, as we record this, there was another one today. Like it, it is very much American horror story, right? And I think that's a brilliant job with Tate, even as awful as it was, but Constance will be moving on into round two. Next, it's another season on season SmackDown. I swear we did not plan these. As the panel is evenly split between two of the baddest witches from Coven, one seed Fiona Good and four seed Madison Montgomery. Zach, tell us why the Coven doesn't need a new Supreme, because Fiona isn't just good. She's great. I will argue that not even death can stop Madison from advancing in this bracket, Zach, please go first. All right. I will I will give Madison some props. She is a bitch. Yes, she, she is. She makes me hate her, which is her job. And I love the actress. She does. And that, that's how I, lo- I love a lot of these actors and actresses, because they make me emote feelings. Um, but when, again, Jessica Lang, I loved her as Constance. And then Fiona, she's similar, but yet she is different. She is controlling conniving she knows how everything's supposed to go she's a supreme she knows the system this is what's supposed to happen and she has absolute power and she begins to become corrupted that she doesn't want to let go she wants to continue to live forever and she like even against her own daughter she does not have and she gets to a point she says no fuck it i'm gonna do what i want And this is what I'm going to do because she's had a taste of that power and she won't let go. And for me, between the two, she made me hate her more. And that's why that's why I went with her over Madison. They both made me hate their characters, but she edged out a little bit more. But ooh, that bitch. Oh, yeah. Like, is there anything that is redeemable about Fiona? Uh, I don't think there is. She is through and through just awful. Really? I know. I mean, Madison had moments yeah where you saw like okay you you would you start to get it i never felt that way uh with with uh with fiona but we still loved her because jessica lang oh, is yes. a goddess yes you can't go wrong with jessica lang so i love this matchup because as zach alluded these are two of the juiciest characters from coven and that's a juicy season i don't think there's a wrong answer here i think it comes down to whether you like the established supreme desperately grasping to hold on to power or a ruthless, powerful, and morally questionable up-and-comer vying to be the next Supreme. Madison gives us range. She starts out as a stereotypical, spoiled Hollywood starlet, Regina Georging Miss Robichaux's Academy for Exceptional Young Ladies. But she goes through it between her assault at the frat house, her subsequent slaughter of her attackers, being actually murdered by Fiona, oops, and then her corpse being manhandled by Spaulding, being resurrected, attempting to kill several of her fellow students. And this is just in Coven. We didn't even talk about what happens after she was consigned to her personal hell, which is working as a checkout clerk in a low-tier retail store that is brilliant. But then she gets resurrected and she helps to save the world from the apocalypse. Like, literally, the witches save the entire world. Sisters are doing it for themselves. What makes Madison special is Emma Roberts's pitch perfect portrayal of this character is there typecasting going on probably because it really does feel a lot like emma roberts in a lot of ways but it works so well she delivers iconic moment after iconic moment in coven up to and including surprise bitch i bet you thought you'd seen the last of me that meme i can't tell you how many times i've shared it carissa is it going to be fiona or is it going to be madison It is Madison for me all the way for all the reasons that you said. Um, They're both terrible, but I just loved watching her. She's so conniving and bitchy, and she dies three times. And her personal hell of retail is like one of the funniest jokes. (laughs) So it's Madison for me. And how about you, Renner? Is it going to be Fiona or is it going to be Madison? 
It's Fiona for me. It has to be Fiona. Um, and, and I want to say she, she is pure evil. But one thing that she does is she does have a brief moment where she is trying to help her daughter. A brief, brief, brief moment right before she's blinded. But it is a little tiny. I mean, it doesn't redeem her, but she does have a little tiny bit of a brief moment there. Well, like I said, there's no bad choice here. And we're stuck two to two. And Fiona is the one seed. So Fiona will advance into round two. Next, there's two more unanimous victories as two seed the Countess from Hotel evicted her landlord, James Patrick March, a three seed. And one seed Marie Laveau from Coven proved a cursed opponent for four seed Elsa Mars from Freak Show. I do want to speak on both of them briefly. Um, James Patrick March was based on an actual person. Uh, and there there's a book about this. I believe they were working on a movie. Has the movie been shelved? Does anyone know? It's Devil in the White City, right? Um, but like hotel, the concept of a crazy billionaire who built this hotel deliberately to lure people to their deaths and built like traps, like that happened. And that's another thing that I love about this show is that every season will have that real person included in there to show you like, yeah, ghosts and witches and everything else are terrifying, but like people are really terrifying. Um, and I thought that Evan Peters did a great job with this character. He's kind of wacky, but also sinister. And then with Elsa Mars, Freak Show is a really interesting season of this show a very high level of acting really interesting scripts not super scary but elsa is a great sympathetic character and i think that that performance she does of life on mars in the opening scenes of that season is literally iconic there's nothing else like that in this whole series and i love it so that being said elsa and uh james patrick march are out and we will see the countess and marie laveau in round two finally in round one the panel is currently set to advance three seed myrtle snow from coven in apocalypse but aaron is saying a prayer for two seed sister jude from asylum aaron use whatever means necessary to cure us of our delusions and push sister jude into round two i will explain why the forecast calls for snow to advance aaron please go first well sister jude okay this is the one character of jessica langs that has a full redemption she goes from being pure evil to being almost like an angel, she completely changes. She And not just because she gets committed, although I think that is a big reason why, but she starts to have empathy. She starts to let go of her past. And she, you know, helps raise children. She, you know, teaches people to dance. She's like a totally different person from the beginning to the end. And you believe her whole redemption arc. You just believe everything that she does. And Jessica Lang gives her all. I think... It's my second favorite character of Jessica Lange's in the whole universe. And I just think just the changes that she goes through and especially, you know, and and even the scene when she is committed and she's doing the name game is one of the most iconic scenes in the whole entire series. Just the way she lets herself go there. Jessica Lange allows herself to be so vulnerable in so many of these roles. And especially this one, because she doesn't always, she's not always the tough bitch She is scared and she lets herself be scared and she lets herself be rescued and lets herself be saved. And also just before she changes, just the fact that she has that red lingerie and she still wants to hang on to that part of herself that went to jazz clubs and drank and slept around. I don't know. I think that's also amazing. it, she's such a compelling character. Uh, before I launch into my defense, Zach, has she swayed you? Are you are you open to switching over here to Sister Jude? I I am open to switching. I want to hear your argument. Um, but a part of my reason to go with Myrtle was because it'd been so long and I didn't remember a lot of stuff about Sister Jude. I liked her character, and I do really like that she has an arc and that this is Jessica's a little bit more showing her vulnerability. And like you said not being the badass bitch. But uh, but yeah, I want to hear I want to hear Eric's argument. Sure. And I agree with all of that. So Myrtle Snow is played by Frances Conroy. Uh, she's one of the breakout characters from Coven and to a lesser degree Apocalypse, although we don't talk that much about Apocalypse because that's a messy, messy season. Uh, although initially a supporting character, Myrtle is used to a terrific effect in Coven, taking on a larger role as the season went on, which is impressive considering she dies fairly early and then she dies again at the end. And then she is iconic while doing both. Myrtle is head of the Witches' Council and is wise to Fiona Good's various schemes. She's a brilliant, powerful witch who is undone multiple times by her inability to accept when someone, 
Typically, Fiona outsmarts her. And to be honest, that makes me like her more. Myrtle isn't just a great character. She's also visually one of the most striking of all the AHS characters. She's a fashionista with that shocking red hair piled on her head. She's hilariously classist and completely over the top in her delivery. Mulligatawny soup. Balenciaga. She is both a good person and good TV. And she will always have my heart. But I will tell you that, Aaron, I am not opposed to switching to Sister Dude here because that is a arc and very few characters on this series overall have that kind of arc. Carissa, what do you think? I'm with Myrtle here because of the two iconic deaths. Like both of them are so iconic and she has such a strong sense of what's right and fairness. And even when it means that she has to die to uphold those principles, like she she requests to do that. And I think her moral compass and just her, the knowledge and wisdom that she brings um, is what tips it for me. So Zach, I'm going to go back to you. You've heard the arguments. Where are you coming down on this one? It's tough. I really want to switch to Sister Jude, but I think I still am going to stick with Myrtle. It, you made a really good argument. Like, I I really want to switch. I'm just not there. I'm sorry, Aaron. I try. You tried and you almost got me. Well, you know what? I'll do it. I'll switch uh, because I do think that it's crazy that we don't have any asylum representation in uh, as we go into round two. So and we have plenty of coven. So I'm going to put my vote to uh, Sister Jude. That gives us two. And she's the two seed. So Sister Jude will continue into round two. And that's the end of round one. We're going to take a quick break so I can track down Big Daddy and the bars of NYC. We'll be right back after these messages. Maybe. Hey there. If you're enjoying this episode of The Great Pop Culture Debate, and I sure hope you are, we would love for you to consider supporting the show on Patreon. Patreon sponsorships start at $5 a month and include loads of great perks, including access to our super active Discord server, exclusive episodes, and warm-ups you won't hear anywhere else. And at the $10 level or higher, your own GPCD tote bag, which is only fitting as this is basically our version of an NPR pledge drive. We can only produce this show with your support. So please consider heading to patreon.com slash great pop culture debate and joining us today. And we are back for round two of our best American horror story character debate. Before we get into the Elite Eight, I'd like our panelists to share their social media accounts, what else they're working on, and their personal favorite American horror story season. Carissa, I'm going to start with you. Where can people find you, what you're working on, and what's your favorite AHS? You can find me on Instagram at Carissa Kloss. But if you actually want to communicate, uh, you can join our Patreon, become a supporter. Uh, We have a really fun Discord with lots and lots of different um, streams, channels, I don't know, discussion topic areas. I am working on more podcast stuff, I believe. So stay tuned. And my favorite season is Coven season three. I just really love the girl powerness of all of it. And so many of the characters, as you've seen, are in this bracket because they are so memorable and so iconic. And that was the one that really made me fall in love with the series. Awesome. Thank you very much. Zach, what are your socials? Where can people find you? What are you working on in your favorite season? All right. I'm on Twitter for the most part at Zach Deuce. Uh, that's where I'll interact with people occasionally or just shit post because that's what that's what you do there on this little dumpster fire. Yeah. Uh, what are we working on? Well, uh, I'm pretty busy with uh, Nate Cast each and every week, but our projects right now with Podcasters Assemble is we are still going through the Ghibli Ghibli seasons. We're down to our, I think, our final two movies, uh, Howl's Moving, Ca- Moving Castle, and then we'll get to the final one, The Boy and the Heron. Um, and then we are making plans Plans for next year because Ghibli took up so much time. What we are going to do in 2025, we are going to do uh, Back to the Future. Mm. And we, the other one, what was it? I think we may tackle the Terminator franchise as well. Cool. Um, so a few of them we're going to be working on, and that'll be coming out in the near future, which is always open to other podcasters to get involved with. And my favorite season of American Horror Story, not to be confused with stories, which is a whole other conversation. It is. Yep. Whole other conversation. Um, I think I will also go with Coven. I think that is very, it's either like Murder House or Coven for most people, I think. There's something about Coven. Again, just the witches I'm really interested in. Angela Bassett is amazing. And it's, it's tied to New England, where I live. So 
the Salem witch trials, just growing up in and around. It, it's a kind of a little bit of a home territory for me. So I really enjoy it. There's some other great seasons that are there. And then there's some other seasons. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, Aaron, you're our special guest for this episode. First, can you tell people where they can find you and tell them about your podcasts? Yes, you can find my main podcast is It's a Fandom Thing. And you can find us on all socials at It's a Fandom Thing Pod, except Twitter. It's just Fandom Thing Pod. You can also go to our website. It's a Fandom Thing Pod.com. You can find all our back catalog, links to our socials, links to our Discord, links to our YouTube channel. And we cover fandom and pop culture primarily from the female perspective, but we have other guests on. Like we've had Eric on this year. We cover Queer as Folk every year as part of Pride Month. And so Eric was on a couple of those episodes. And we have covered American Horror Story. This was a few years ago. And you will find what is really funny about that episode, because my favorite seasons, it's tied really, is Hotel and 1984. And you'll discover if you listen to that episode that I actually did not like Hotel at first. I hated mm. Hotel. And then I became a huge fan of it. And so when you listen to that episode, if you go back and listen to it, which I think you should, you will probably be like, hey, she said Hotel was her favorite season and she's slamming that season in <laughs> this conversation. But it was a good conversation and horror is my favorite genre, as Eric said before. So we also are going to have an upcoming horror trivia event and Eric is going to be participating in that as well. So four nights of trivia on our YouTube channel where you can also find um, we did live stream reactions to season 10 of American Horror Story. So you can also find those as well. We just cover a ton, a ton of stuff, any kind of fandom you can think of, any kind of show you can think of. We have probably covered it or covered some actor from it or something like that. So, Can you tell people what dates the horror trivia are? Because we will oh, yes. be releasing this in spooky season, but it'll probably be a couple weeks ahead of Halloween, just FYI. Um, so Saturday the 5th, Saturday the 12th, Thursday the 17th, and Thursday the 24th. And all of those are at 6.30 Mountain Standard Time. And all, once again, on the YouTube channel. And Eric will be on... Saturday, October 12th one, which is about monsters. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining us for this. It's been a lot thank of fun. Uh, and please go check out It's a Fandom Thing. You can find me at Eric Resniak on Instagram, but really just message at Great Pop Culture Debate on Insta or TikTok or at GPCD on Mastodon. But what you really need to do right now is to sign up for our weekly newsletter, new every Tuesday at noon. It tells you about everything new in pop culture that week. Sign up by finding the link on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or via our link tree on any of our social media accounts. So for me, Coven, obviously, a uh, fave, gay, whatevs. Um, but I'm also going to talk about some of the more slept on seasons that I still enjoy. Roanoke, I know, is very divisive among the fandom, but I thought it was the one of the scariest ones honestly that one the the, the pig man terrified me the jether segments terrified me the segments were like it wasn't the reenactments but the actual like ghosts coming out and surrounding the house like that was really messed up um so uh, that one i loved cult people hate it i loved it and i do I, I was saying earlier the trick for me is i binged it like i didn't watch it episodically i watched it in like three chunks and it worked very well in that um particular i think delivery mechanism and then finally nyc not well regarded by many people but as a gay man who's coming of age during the aids crisis i thought it had incredibly powerful moments and that astonishing montage to craftworks radioactive that happened in the last episode was just like a sucker punch i think it's one of the best things that Ryan Murphy Productions has ever done. And we at least need to speak on that because it was really powerful television. So that being said, it's time for our Patreon shout out. This one is to Kim Carvalho, who has been supporting the show since we started literally four years ago. And we're so grateful. Thank you so much, Kim. If you would like to get a shout out on a future episode, become a Patreon supporter by finding the link on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com. Now let's move into round two before Michael Langdon brings about the apocalypse again. But to give the devil his due... The guy's got great hair. The panel is currently split between two very different but relatable heroines. One seed, Liz Taylor from Hotel, and three seed, Lana Winters from Asylum. Aaron, tell us why we shouldn't be afraid of Virginia Woolf, but we should be afraid if we knock Liz out of the bracket now. I will try to outwit Bloody Face as I get Lana Winters to escape the Asylum and survive round three. 
I'll go first. So these are, I think, two of the most compelling characters in the entire AHS franchise. Both of them are complex, sympathetic, engaging. They're both survivors. This could be a final two matchup, and I would completely believe it. My argument for Lana is that while Liz is a wonderful supporting character, Lana arguably carries Asylum on her shoulders. She's the backbone of that entire season. It is ultimately her story. And the range that Sarah Paulson exhibits in that role is, I think, what made her a star. Bear in mind that Murder House, she did appear in a guest spot. But this Asylum is her first lead role, and she devoured it. It cemented her place in the AHS firmament. Lana starts out as a cocky and crafty investigative journalist, and after facing any number of torments in the Briarcliff Asylum and at the hands of Dr. Threadson, aka Bloody Face, turns into one of the ultimate final girls in all of horror. Lana makes mistakes throughout, but in the end, she's a fighter and she takes out not only Bloody Face, but also shuts down the asylum and ends the life of her own maniac son. That's wild. Lana has appeared in subsequent seasons, including Roanoke and Cult. She's one of the key characters for AHS and she earned Paulson an Emmy nomination. That being said, I'm going to give it to Aaron, who is very passionate about Liz Taylor. Yes, I am extremely passionate about Liz Taylor. This is my ultimate all-time favorite character in the American Horror Story universe. Liz Taylor, I would argue, even though Liz Taylor is supporting, Liz Taylor is the heart of Hotel. Liz Taylor is the heart and soul of that whole entire season. She became her true self and you got to watch her become her true self. Um, Dennis O'Hare's performance is absolutely mind-blowing. Liz Taylor helped others. Uh, gave Iris hope, gave Will, who is like the mopiest, most annoying character in the season, hope, um, gave Sally hope, had faith in Tristan when nobody else did, gave Tristan books when everybody else thought of Tristan as some dumb model. Um, just everything was motivated by love for Liz. And Liz had a beautiful death, actually. And it was a death on her terms. And the fact that it was out that she died to the ballad of Lucy Jordan is just beautiful. The whole scene is amazing. She forgave the Countess for viciously in a death that I have still not forgiven Ryan Murphy for, uh, the murder of Tristan. And she still forgave the Countess and still had love for the Countess. And the Countess still loved her in the end because that was who Liz was. Liz was the beating heart of that place and also was able to have a beautiful relationship with her son before dying. And that was something that she thought could never happen. And just absolutely just the most amazing character ever, ever. It is. It's a beautiful story. If you have not watched Hotel, please do it for, I mean, there's a lot, but this particularly. Carissa, tough decision. Is it going to be Liz Taylor or is it going to be Lana Winters? Um, it's not that tough for me. It's Liz Taylor here. The The nuance and the beauty of that performance, it's, um, you know, if you're thinking just off top of your head, top five characters, that's one that pops in for me immediately. Zach, is it Liz Taylor or Lana Winters? Lana is such a incredible character. And like you said, it was a breakout role for, oh God, her name is- Sarah Paulson. You're Sarah. Good. Sarah, like that really- showed you what she can do and why she's a staple in AHS. And I loved her character. I love the fact that her character continued through other series. With that said, Aaron made a incredible argument for Liz. And really, I think I'm going to switch because Liz was such a incredibly unique character, loving, caring. Lana does so much for Asylum, but part of me also thinks Lana shines in Asylum because because of the limitations of the season. Hotel, I feel it's a slow burn in Hotel, but I think it's a superior season. And Liz, as a supporting character, sticks out as one of the more prominent ones, despite the great talent in our uh, actors and actresses that you have. So I'm going to flip to Liz. I love it. I'm not mad about that at all. So well done, Aaron. And we will be moving Liz Taylor into the final four. Next, it's another unanimous victory for one seed Misty Day from Coven, who finally put to rest the malignant spirit of two seed Constance Langdon from Murder House. Does anybody else have anything to say about Misty? Because she is advancing to the final four. We haven't talked about her yet. Carissa, anything? I just think she's incredible. So yeah, I nothing more to add at this moment. 
All right, so we'll continue to talk about Misty next round. And I think it may be another unanimous victory with one seed Fiona Good from Coven being cut by the clawed glove of two seed the Countess from Hotel. But again, we haven't really talked about the Countess yet. So, Zach, please tell us why for you it's all glove, all love for Gaga. Well, with Lady Gaga, uh, this was this was really my first time seeing her in any sort of acting role like you know my wife is a big fan of her music um she's not my cup of tea but she is an incredibly talented musician um and then seeing her in hotel she was another standout character as as much as liz was i like uh gaga's portrayal of her and i mean come on a healthy diet of sex and blood Mm mm-hmm that's how that, I live that, my life. <laughs> you you're you spend most of the season like intrigued by her. It's like, all right, there's something off with her. She is a bit more of a, a creature. She's more she's more than human. What is she? Okay, she's does she just like to be around blood? Oh, she actually needs the blood. And there's something about her character that was captivating for me that stood out that was intimidating and all knowing about everything that was going on. It it really captivated me. Her character did for that entire season. And she was the one I was always looking forward to every episode of what are we going to learn about the countess? This mystery has me just hooked. And then you do learn her origin and show tremendous rage on uh, rage range on Gaga's part. So excellent. We will be talking about Gaga and the Countess in the final four. Finally, in round two, it's a battle between two iconic women, two seed Sister Jude from Asylum and one seed Marie Laveau from Coven. I honestly was not sure where this one was going to go. So we're just going to go around the horn. Aaron, as our special guest, are you going to go with Sister Jude or are you going to go with Marie Laveau? We haven't talked about Marie at all. Oh, I love both of these. Uh, right now, I'm going to go with Marie because um Angela Bassett number one number one number one number one also um I, I love the scene where Marie Laveau has two cops killing each other I don't know why but I just wrote that down and also kind of I'm kind of saying this in a way as justice for her because one thing I hate that they did with Marie Laveau in Apocalypse is the fact that they had her basically sacrifice her life to save all the white characters and that was annoying to me. But I also just love Marie Laveau. She is just sexy and strong and badass. And she can really call those witches out. She takes them to task. I love that. And I love when she puts on um, Kathy Bates' character's blood and looks in the mirror and says she's beautiful. It's just, oh, it's like just icing on the cake. So just Mainly just really just want to give her a big, huge shout out because I think she's kind of underrated in the whole universe in a lot of respects. So and Angela Bassett is just everything. A goddess. Absolutely. Yes. Carissa, is it Marie Laveau or is it Sister Jude? I'm going to go with Marie Laveau here. Zach, Sister Jude or Marie Laveau? I'm sticking with the voodoo queen. Well, we're going to make it a queen sleep and we're going to give it to Marie Laveau, who will be moving into our final four. And with that, we do have our final four. We're going to take a quick break to complain about Kim Kardashian. We'll be right back after these messages. Another email newsletter? God, I know. But listen, the great pop culture debate newsletter, it's actually useful. Give us three minutes of your lunch break and we'll tell you all the coolest new stuff in pop culture that week. The biggest new movies and theaters, the hottest new albums about to drop, the TV shows everyone will be talking about. We bring it to you every ball. It's all thriller and no filler. And you'll also find out all the fun news from the podcast. Subscribe today at greatpopculturedebate.com backslash subscribe. And we are back with the final four of our best American Horror Story character debate. At this point in the show, I always like to take a step back and see if it shook out the way I expected it to. I also like to add at this point that no matter which option wins, we are celebrating all of these entries, and I hope nobody gets salty about what comes next. So we have Liz Taylor from Hotel, a one seed, versus Misty Day from Coven, a one seed. The Countess from Hotel, a two seed. And Marie Laveau from Coven, a one seed. It is wild. And I suspect to the people listening to this as well, that not a single Jessica Lange character made the final four. I do think, however, if you're looking at who did make the final four, these are the fan favorites from two of the most popular seasons. I know Murder House is one that people often go to, but I think if you're talking about the high watermarks for the cultural relevance of this show, 
Coven and Hotel are when it was getting the most conversation. Erin, as someone who knows fandoms, who knows horror, do you think this is the right final four? I do. I actually really love this final four. Um, yes, I agree. It's a shame that Jessica Lange isn't in this final four, but I think this is a terrific lineup. Great. And I mean, we do have all women, which I think is amazing. Yeah. And also, I think, deserved, as they say on Drag Race Philippines. So let's start. It's Liz Taylor from Hotel versus Misty Day from Coven. I'm going to go around the horn. I'm going to start with Aaron. Which one are you going to go with? I think I have a, a sneaking suspicion. <laughs> I'm like, how can I not? Liz Taylor all the way. And, and I love Misty Day. I do absolutely love Misty Day. But Liz Taylor to me is the beating heart of the whole entire franchise. So I cannot vote against her. Excellent. Carissa, is it Liz Taylor or Misty Day? This was. This feels like a really mean matchup because these are both like love and heart and soul. Um, but for me, it's misty day the the stevie nicks of it all just kept me enthralled the whole season and she was just such a high point in my favorite season so misty day for me zach is it liz taylor or is it misty day it's still misty for me um she's an incredible character and i could i would be happy with it, whichever one proceeds forward but i love misty she has, she's such a tragic story i love her and again, the connect, connection to Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, the White Witch. I just love how they they expanded on her character. So I'm sticking with Misty. I have a couple thoughts. Number one, I remember watching Kevin and vividly thinking, like, she was the poochie, but in a good way. Like, when Misty Day was not on the screen, I was like, why is Misty not here? When are they going to bring Misty back into this? She's by far the most interesting character. And that's saying something because they were all really interesting characters. That was not like shading anyone. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is Liz Taylor was not only the most popular response in the poll for this survey. She was the most popular by a significant margin. It was like Liz Taylor way ahead of everybody else. And then it was number two. Um, given that, um, I think these are two very similar characters. Carissa said, this is a mean matchup, but what's more American Horror Story than getting stabbed in the heart? And so um, I think it's appropriate. Who's the bigger heart for this? I am going to give it to Liz. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think there's a wrong answer here, but uh, I, I'm going to give it to Liz and she is the ultimate number one seed. So she is going to continue to the final two. Also from Hotel, it's the Countess, a two seed versus Marie Laveau from Coven. I'm going to start in the back of the pack with Zach. Where are you on this one? Oh, God, I didn't see this one coming. Uh I think I'll stick with the Countess. I love Marie, but again, I was similar to always wondering where Misty was in Coven. I always wanted to be like, "What's the where's the Countess? What is the Countess doing? I loved Marie every time she was on screen, and she is a great part of that season. But the Countess was really drawing me in the entire season of, of Hotel going, where is she? What is she doing? Why is, why is there not more Gaga? Give me more. Give me the radio Gaga. Yes. Carissa, is it Countess or is it Marie Laveau? I'm going to go with Marie Laveau here, actually. We've been talking a lot about the witches and the witches aspect of Coven, but the voodoo part is equally, it, it's the flip side of it. And they also, there's a push pull there that I think is really important. Yeah, I have justice for Marie Laveau. Aaron, is it going to be Marie Laveau? Oh, or is it going to be the Countess? It's going to be the Countess for me. Um, I love both, but the Countess wins by far. Um, even though, even though she killed Tristan, I still forgive her. Plus, she had one of the hottest sex scenes ever with Donovan because of Matt Bomer. So, yeah, <laughs> she wins. I think it would be remiss if we didn't have a villain somewhere in this final two, because I would argue that the villains are the most interesting characters in virtually any season of this show. There's exceptions, but most of them. And I think the Countess is, uh, I mentioned this very early, it's rare that we get both a villain who is scary and also sympathetic. And the Countess does that so beautifully. She's, uh, Zach, I think you mentioned it, like you were, you were intimidated by her, but you were still yeah. entranced by her. Yeah, it, it was, you couldn't, you wanted to see more, but you were also... I, I'm not sure what she wants to do, and I would be terrified in this situation while also not running away. It's a weird thing to be in of like, there's danger, but I think I'd stay here. It's a it's weird. And that's vampires, right? Like, if, again, if we're talking about what American Horror Story is supposed to be doing, it's looking at all these various yep. horror tropes, right? Vampires are 
lethal. They're terrifying. You know that they you are prey to them, and yet you cannot help but be seduced by them. And the fact that they were able to pull that off in a very weird way, by the way. Can we talk? And Aaron, and I'd be curious. We can do this offline. But like, why were the vampires in hotel? They didn't use fangs. What was the deal with that? I think it was just supposed to be like a different change up on it because the vampire lore has been done today. The vampires are like my favorite in monster stuff. And I just love it. It's such a different thing. I think it was just supposed to make it also make them vulnerable in a way mm-hmm. too, even mo- more vulnerable because they're kind of human still. Um, the fact that just to, you know, that you can just slice them across their throat and they're going to die and, or be shot and they're going to die. And it's, yeah. So I think that's why. And also just the Ryan Murphy loves throat slashing, yep. especially in that season. So I think that was another reason. Fair enough. Um, all of that being said, I am going to give it to the Countess. I'm sorry uh, to Marie Laveau and to Carissa, which gives us a final two of Hotel versus Hotel. Liz Taylor versus the Countess. You check in, but you don't check out. I want to start with Carissa, where are you on this one? This is such an interesting final two, I think. Um, But I am with Liz Taylor here. Uh, That performance captivated me the most of this whole season, which I think had a lot of sort of individual um, performances. You know, a lot everybody who was there was kind of doing their thing. Um, And Liz Taylor did such a great job with everybody you know her interfacing and also I just think that the performance is played with such beauty and nuance and deserves to be um, lauded for that on top of everything else so Liz Taylor for me Zach is it Liz Taylor or is it the Countess oh Jesus why'd you come to me I know Uh, this is tough I love both characters but I as much as I personally prefer the Countess I think Liz is the better character. I think she, but they, they're the, both the two standout characters of that season. And I think Liz does more and shows a bit more range than the Countess does. The Countess played her part, drew you in, captivated you. Liz gave us a bit more of a story that was tragic um, and got more emotion out of me. So I'm going to go with Liz. So, Aaron, before I go to your vote, which I think is pretty inevitable, were there any nominations for either one of these actors for these roles? Do you happen to know? No, I don't think there, which is... Isn't that crazy? What? Yeah, I mean, and Lady Gaga is an amazing, terrific actor. I, I wanted to say she is so amazing. She's so incredible. And yeah, I don't I don't think there were, unless I'm wrong about that. But that's, uh, that's criminal. We'll fact check that. But uh, so for you, who is it going to be? Um, Liz Taylor. <laughs> I think I've already spoken all my love that I can for Liz Taylor. There is, I guess, a like almost like a Funko type doll that I've got to find somewhere. Dennis O'Hare was uh, shared it on Instagram a while ago, and I've got to find that because anything Liz Taylor. I mean, yeah. I just think it is wild that Dennis O'Hare delivered what I think is one of the best performances by an actor I've ever seen on television. I'm not, I'm not joking. Like seriously, it's incredible, and not even a nomination for that is is just bonkers. If you've never watched Hotel, do yourself a favor. I think it's a really interesting season. I think it's aged very well. And I do think that Liz is an amazing character. And I don't know any other show on television besides a Ryan Murphy show that could do it. And uh, I'm grateful to that and to American Horror Story. So there you have it. Our pick for the best American Horror Story character is Liz Taylor from Hotel. Do you agree? Do you suspect that we've joined some type of cult? Tell us how you really feel by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or Mastodon. While you're there, make sure you subscribe and follow the podcast so you can hear about what new debates are coming soon, vote in open polls, and even decide which topics we tackle next. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to like and rate it on whatever platform you listen on. I want to say thank you to my panel. Thank you all for taking your dose of the muse before recording this. And thank you for listening. Thank you especially to Aaron for being our special guest tonight. And if you loved what you heard, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get even more exclusive content and you get episodes a whole day early. We hope you have a good one. And remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinion. There's not going to be a swimming pool, you stupid slut. <laughs>